So hello everyone, this is Varish here and welcome to Nutrition and Plants Day 6. So from our previous videos, we know something about cells, living organisms, nutrition, photosynthesis, nitrogen fixation and all that stuff. Now in this video, we are going to deal with something interesting heterotrophic plants now we can see the heading over here and that does some does sound weird because we know that plants are autotrophs and they create food by photosynthesis and we have taken a deeper look into photosynthesis and then understood it really well and then we know that autotrophs are the producers so they produce food and autotrophs are plants basically plants are autotrophs so we learned that but what heterotrophic plants what are heterotrophic plants we see so in today's video we would be exploring heterotrophic plants now some plants lack the ability to prepare food like the autotrophic plants and hence are classified into heterotrophic plants so i told you right all plants cannot make their own food some plants like the one over here this is really weird from the normal plant we see these plants cannot prepare their own food so they depend on other organisms like we do they also depend on other organisms for food and such plants are called heterotrophic plants now there are four types of heterotrophic plants parasitic insectivorous symbiotic and saprophytic so in this video we would be talking about parasitic and saprophytic plants in our next video we'll deal we'll be dealing with insectivorous and symbiotic plants so as you can see over here heterotrophic nutrition or heterotrophs these all are the normal heterotrophs you see but plants can also be heterotrophs that we that we just saw okay so first up is the parasitic plants now a parasite parasite is an organism that depends on other organism completely now when you know when you hear the word parasite what comes to your mind must be a mosquito basically mosquitoes are the commonly known parasites which are there because they are completely dependent on human's blood and they suck your blood they are really irritating and parasite and then there you go you understood parasite parasite is an organism that depends on other organism completely so we the mosquitoes depend on human blood completely so they are parasites now here we are talking about plants that are parasites plants that depend on other plants completely or yeah the plants completely so they are parasitic plants and host is the organism on which the parasite depends on so in let's take an example the mosquito human example so over here mosquito is the parasite because it is depending on human for food and then the host is the human because the parasite is depending on whom the host or the human in this case so plants parasitic plants basically depend on other plants which are normal plants for their food so you can see some weird pictures of parasitic plants this one over here this one over here this seem to seems to look like a flower so this is rafflesia it's the it's it's the largest flower that is present and it still smells like rotten meat and then this is the cascuta it's a yellow like thread that you know circles around a plant so you can see the yellow part that's the cascuta and what happens is that these parasitic plants they derive everything from their host and they kill the host completely or they cause a lot of damage to the host suppose you take a plant suppose this plant this normal healthy tree once the parasite starts growing all the food which is prepared all the water and minerals which are absorbed would be taken away by that parasite and once they are all taken away by the parasite the tree will have nothing so there would be a lot of damage to the tree and sometimes even the host or the tree would be killed so parasitic plants are really bad because bad in the sense they are really one way they take a lot and give nothing 
सो एग्जाम्पल्स कैन बी कस्क्यूटा रफ्लेशिया पाइलोस्टाइल्स थर्ड बेरी नो पाइलोस्टाइल्स थर्ड बेरी दिस वन इज आन अदर गुड स्पीशीज ऑफ पैरासाइट प्लांट्स दिस वन में ही यू कैन सी पाइलोस्टाइल्स थर्ड बेरी दैट इज वॉट इज पाइलोस्टाइल्स थर्ड बेरी Now, why is mistletoe a partial parasite? You can see the picture of a mistletoe here. So, why is it a partial parasite? Now, what are partial parasites? We know that parasites completely depend on hosts for food. But what if the parasites depend only do not completely depend on the host? Now, mistletoe is such a species. Now, mistletoe only depends on the host for raw materials and prepares its own food. So. Mistletoe does not have a proper mechanism to take the raw materials. So when the tree takes the raw materials, the mistletoe takes the raw materials from the tree and prepares its own food. But about the complete parasites, they completely take the food and raw materials from the tree. They do not make their own food. They completely take their direct food, which is produced by the tree. Tree over here, this mistletoe, which is a partial parasite, it does not completely take everything from the tree. It just takes the raw materials and then prepares its own food. And then it also depends on a bird called flower picker. So this one is the flower picker to disperse its seeds. Now our next chapter in biology is going to be seed dispersal, and that's where we learn more about this. So remember, this mistletoe is a partial parasite because of this reason. Hostoria is a part that is used to absorb water and food from the host. So, if, as we saw that the parasites absorb everything from the host. So, just like the roots absorb water and minerals from the soil, Hostoria is a part in the parasite that absorbs water and minerals or water and food from the host. Next comes the saprophytic plant. They are the organisms that depend on dead and decaying matter. So they are the organisms that depend on dead and decaying matter. If there were no saprotrophs on the earth, the earth would be full of dead bodies or dead organisms because once a plant or an animal dies, they are eaten by the saprophytic plants. That's why you you would find dead plants and animals rarely, or else if if the all the dead plants and dead animals were there on this earth. The earth would be full of dead bodies, so these saprophytes eat them. So they do not harm everyone, but instead even help everyone by clearing the dead bodies as their source of nutrition. Now, hyphae is used for nutrition. So hyphae is in part that is used for nutrition, and sporangium is used for reproduction. This sporangium is also called spores, that is also used for reproduction. Examples are rhizopus, mushroom, etc. See, as we can see over here, this one is a rhizopus, this porangiophore, spores, etc. And then you can see a bacteria. Um, you can see a bacteria, uh, mushroom, and etc. So this one is about the saprophytic saprophyte plant. So here you can see a clear picture. So this one over here is scuta, this yellow one. And over here, this is Rafflesia, and over here, this is a mistletoe plant. So now, from this video, we know that there are some heterotrophic plants that are really weird. And then we talked about parasitic plants that are, that are not real parasites in the living world, but they do act like parasites. They are plants, but they are parasites. And then we learned about saprophytic plants that are really helpful not not at all harmful and then they clear the dead bodies they feed on dead and decaying matter and we learned some terms like hostoria sporangium hyphae and some examples like the scuta etc so hope you like today so in our next video we'll talk about symbiotic and insectivorous plants or the nutrition so hope you enjoyed this video and learn something new I'll continue the chapter in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.